before we go on and do any group judging, I, I'd like to point out how wonderful the showground is looking and what a lot of work has got, gone into putting the show on the road, especially in COVID regulations. So I think the Darlington Committee, led by David Guy, deserves a round of applause for all their work in getting the show on the road. And with no more ado, I'll introduce you to our toy group judge today. Please welcome Mr. Tom Mother. And we're ready now to see the best of breed winners in the toy group. Please welcome in the Affenpinscher, the Bichon Frise, the Bolognese, the Cavalier King Charles, the Long Coat Chihuahua, and the Smooth Coat Chihuahua. The Chinese Crested comes next. The Coton de Tulia, and the English Toy Terrier. The Griffin Bruxellois comes next. The Havanese. Next, the Italian Greyhound. The Japanese Chin, the King Charles Spaniel, the Löfchen, next is the Maltese, the Miniature Pincher comes next, followed by the Papillon, the Pekingese comes next, the, Pump, the Pug follows on, and finally the Yorkshire Terrier. And from the import register, the Rusky, the Rusky toy. There we are. Almost a full compliment here for our group judge. Our group judge started showing dogs and interest in dogs as a schoolboy. Started with Bichon Frise, became heavily involved in Japanese chins. Has a wide range of in interests also outside the toy group a judge of five groups and best in show at championship level. And he is qualified to judge all of the breeds in the toy group with CCs. First walk round, taking in the outline and proportions of the best of breed winners. Now on the table, the Affen Pincher, judged by Bert Easton today, from an entry of 21, he's chosen this bitch, number 3775. The breed which originates in Germany where he was used to guard stables, keep down the rodents, so he, although a toy dog, he still had a very useful, known as the little devil dogs of Germany because of their sparkling temperament. Thought that the Griffon plays a part in its ancestry. This should be a sort of rough urchin of a dog, a little goose-stepping, compact, and full of temperament. The Affenpinscher. Now on the table are Bichon Freeze, best of breed winner, Mr. Walklate, Dave Walklate, a specialist, has awarded best of breed to this bitch, number 3792. This is one of the Mediterranean white breeds, sparkling white coat and jet black pigmentation around the eyelids, dark halos of skin around the eyes. thought that the 
history. It goes back to the Middle Ages, where it was in Tenerife, and then later on developed in France. The Bichon means the white dog, the Bichon family, and Frise describes the texture and curl of the coat, loose corkscrew curls of silky texture. And something very attractive to it there. It's a, an equipment malfunction before we see it go off again. The winning Bichon number 3792. Another of the Bichon family now on the table, the Bolognese, judged by Albert White from an entry of seven. He chose this dog, number 3820. The breed takes its name from this city of Bologna in Italy, northern Italy, where the breed was developed. Gaining popularity in this country. Our judge just looking at the pads to see the dark pigmentation of them. Very special and very important in these white coated breeds. Their dark eyes and pigment gives them that extra attraction. Like many of the toy breeds, they were the Bolognese is a miniaturization, often made popular by the ladies of the household, kept as their companions, often carried about in little baskets with ribbons on. There is the winning Bolognese, number 3820. Helen Long judged the Cavalier King Charles today. Her winner was this black and tan, a bitch, number 3838. The Cavaliers go back to the, the reign of Charles I and Charles II when they were very popular in the royal palaces. Hence the name Cavalier. The Cavalier and the King Charles, which we'll see shortly, were both miniaturizations of sporting spaniels. Many of the toy breeds coming down and being miniaturized versions of the sporting breeds. A variety of colors in the Cavalier, this one, the black and tan, used to be known as the Norfolk Spaniel because it was made popular by the Duke of Norfolk. The Blenheim going back to the palace of its development, Blenheim Palace. The first of the Chihuahuas on the table now. Irene McManus judged 55 of them today. Her choice was this dog, number 3953. Reputedly the smallest breed in the world. Hailing from Mexico, in the late 18th century, they became quite popular as companions and were taken back to America where they became quite a canine craze and were very popular with film stars in Hollywood and that brought them great popularity, which they enjoy now. They may be the smallest breed in the world, but they don't know that. They're full of their own self-importance. Dome skull, large ears, and the tail carried over the back are important breed features.
Now on the table, the smooth-coated Chihuahua. Specialist, Miss Louisa Henry, judged 60 of them today and chose this dog, 4020, as best of breed. The long coat and the smooth coat share the same standard. The smooth having a sort of fairly dense, smooth coat. The same domed head, the thick tail, curved over the back, large dark eyes. The weight of a chihuahua, usually between four and six pounds. So it's uh, pretty diminutive, but full of confidence. Now on the table, the Chinese crested Albert White, judged 28 of them today. His winner was the bitch, number 4037. This breed goes back to around the 9th century in the Tang Dynasty of China. So a very ancient breed. And again, it's thought that there were some larger varieties of this breed, which were used for hunting. The smallest in the litter were handed down to the ladies of the palaces and they developed them in a miniaturized form to be their pets. They come in two varieties. The hairless variety we see here, which has a mane of hair from its head running down its neck. The fine hair covers the pastons and feet and a plume, of, a plume on the tail, giving it similarities to My Little Pony in its outline and its style on the move. There is the winning Chinese crested number 4037. Judge from Ireland, Judge, uh, Miss Anne Ingram, Judge the Cotton de Tullias today. And from an entry of 12, she's chosen our best of breed winner here. It's known as the Royal Dog of Madagascar. And had been seen on the island of Tula for many years, hence the Cotton de Tullia. The word cotton, French word, describing the texture of its coat, like old-fashioned hard cotton. They have a unique top line with this rise over the loin and a fall to the tail. Large dark eyes. It's a single coat which takes a lot of looking after, but they're full of character and personality. The Cotton de Tuli are there, 4063. Now the English Toy Terrier, Bert Easton, 34 of them for him to judge today, and he chose this dog, number 4074. This is a dog which was developed through the miniaturization of the Manchester Terrier, which we see in the Terrier group. And like its ancestor, was used for keeping down vermin around the, the mills and industrial towns of Manchester and Lancashire. And were often waging in betting matches in the rat pits where they were so keen to kill rats, showing they were still capable of doing a job of work. 
special features of the English Toy Terrier, its candle flame shaped ears and its extended trotting action. Black with rich tan markings on head and legs and chest. The Griffon Bruxelles work today were judged by Mrs. Carthage. From an entry of 38, she chose this dog, number 4111. The breed comes in two coats, the rough coat and the smooth coat, which we see here. Hailing from Belgium. Paintings by the old masters of Holland dating back to the 15th century showed dogs of grip on type, short and compact with short faces. They should be square and sturdy, a rounded skull and a good turn up of their chin. There is our winning Griffon Bruxelles wire number 4111. the table, the Havanese, Vanessa Cox, judged 15 of them today and awarded best of breed to this bitch, number 4169. Takes its name from the city of Havana in Cuba, where the breed originated, was then brought to Europe and America by Spanish traders is how many of the breeds were spread around the world. The Havanese comes in a variety of colors and should be silky textured in coat, very lively and energetic on the move. There is the winning Havanese number 4169. Italian Greyhounds today were judged by Miss Margaret Bullcock and she had an entry of 31. Her winner was the bitch number 4221. The breed can be dated back to the Middle Ages and even earlier in Roman society and it's thought that there is a miniaturization of the the sight hound, and it retains the shape of a sight hound with this slight arch over the loin, but of course, much smaller, more delicate in the bone, but a lovely curving outline held on the move, and beautiful fine skin and coat, and a high skipping action. There is the winning Italian Greyhound, number 4221. Our judge, very familiar with the Japanese chin, having been owned champions in it and shown champions for the Stern Rock Kennel in the past. Although it carries the mantra Japanese, it was a breed which really came from China. The Empress of China gave the Empress of Japan one as a gift, and they became very popular in the royal palaces. So the breed was developed in Japan. The word chin means cat-like, and this may be attributed to its clean habits of cleanliness and the, the shape of the head with this nicely cushioned muzzle. Should be cobby and 
squarely built with wonderful expression from large eyes. There is the winning Japanese chin, the number 4243. Now on the table, the King Charles Spaniel. And this is Carthage, judge 34 of them. And the winner was this dog, number 4300, a ruby. Until 1945, the King Charles, we see here with its dome skull and very short muzzle, was shown with the Cavalier as one breed. They were only separated in 1945. Before that, the breeds were developed together, but the, some breeders decided they wanted a longer, flatter, a, a flatter skull and longer foreface, and that's how the Cavalier came about. The domed, the domed skull and the shorter foreface is the King Charles. They're known as the Royal Spaniels because of their link with Charles I and Charles II. Our winning King Charles there, number 4300. The Lurchin on the table now has been sent forward by Mrs. Irene McManus. The winner is a dog, number 4337. This is also a member of the Bichon family, of, although coming in a variety of colors. Also known as the little lion dog because of the traditional clip. The skull is flat, the muzzle fairly short and square and strong, large dark eyes and nose. We see the traditional clip here of the the clipped hindquarters, a plume on the tail, and a mane over the forequarters of the dog, which gives it the lion-like appearance, earning it the name Little Lion Dog. It's another breed which were used as ladies' comforters. They used to keep the ladies warm in bed. The winning latch in there, number 4337. Now, our judge looking at the Maltese. Anne Ingram, judge 22 of them, and chose this dog, number 4360, as best to breed. Again, our judge just checking the pigmentation on the pads. One of the Mediterranean white breeds again. Thought they go back to the 19th century. Found in royal palaces, the white silky coat, cobby body, the tail carried over the, the back, and all in a compact size. They used to be carried around in, ba in baskets, decorated with ribbon. The winning Maltese there, number 4360. The best of breed miniature pincher was sent forward by Vanessa Cox from an entry of 32 when she chose this bitch. 
number 4399 as best of breed. This is the smallest of the pincher family. We see the Doberman and pincher in the working group and also the pincher, the middle size. This is the smallest. Again, bred down and miniaturized, but retaining some of the same features. Square in its build, a wedge-shaped head, as the miniature has these neat, pricked ears. And the UK standard asks for a hackney action, some lift of the front legs, and the strong top line held on the move. The Papillons today, 75 of them, very nice entry for Wendy Waters, saw this bitch, number 4452, winning best of breed. In the, in, developed in France and Belgium, in Europe it's known as the Dwarf Spaniel, the Epaniel Nurn. Means a, a dwarf spaniel, so that's thought that they come down from the sporting spaniels. Here, however, we've got fine, dainty bone. Come in two varieties one with the pricked ears, as we see here, the papillon, and they get that name because when the ears are erect, they look like the spread wings of a butterfly. The other variety has dropped ears. And that's known as the Falen or the Mop. There we are, the winning Papillon, number 4452. Now on the table, the Pekingese. 29 of them here today, and our best of win winner is the Dog, number 4506. This Ori a dog from the Orient, going back to the Tang Dynasty in China in the 9th century. They were favorites in the royal palaces. The, the ordinary common person couldn't own one. They were kept as the n nobility, by the nobility. Should be relatively small, thick set, and full of self-importance. They were brought back when China was overrun, a few of them were brought back to England in the 19th century. And again, they were very popular in the landed gentry and in the nobility. Low slung, slightly bowed in the front legs and broad in the chest, which gives them this rolling action. wide skull and shallow face with large eyes give it great ar aristocratic look and great charm. The winning Picardies there is number 4506. Seventy Pomeranians here today for Miss Astrid Ogilvy, a breed specialist, and she chose number four five six six as best of breed. The Pomeranian hails back to the German Spitz, with whom it shares some similarities, but is much finer in bone, shorter in the head, but has those same little neat pricked ears. The Pomeranian, compact and buoyant, was made popular by Queen Victoria, who had a, owned a lot of them and actually showed them at Alexandra Palace Dog Show during her reign. 
There are a lot of them in Queen Victoria's palaces. Our winner, the Pomeranian there, number 4566. And now on the table, the Pug, another breed hailing from China. Judged by breed specialist Mrs. McElhaney today, she chose this bitch, number 4690, as best of breed. Again, hailing from China, the Chinese had a penchant, uh, great popularity with short-faced toy breeds, as we see in the Japanese chin, which came from China. Here, the pug, brought to Europe by the East India traders in the 16th century, where they became popular, and then to England with uh, William of Orange, who became king in England. This short, Compact, the standard says for multum in parvo, which means a lot of substance in a small frame. There is the winning pug, number 4690. And on the table now, the Yorkshire Terrier. Andrew Stewart judged 36 of them today and chose this bitch, number 4722, as best of breed. We're not so far sitting here in North Yorkshire, not so far from the origins of the Yorkshire Terrier. The original Yorkshire Terriers were used as ratters to keep down vermin in the mill towns and in the cotton mills. Our judge is there just looking at the coat, the texture of the coat and the colours, very important in the breed. It's thought that the founder of the breed was a dog called Huddersfield Ben in the 19th century. But like many of the toy breeds, the smallest of the litters were given to the women of the household and they developed them small, dainty and took great pride in looking after their coats. Hence this silky blue coat steel blue in colour, and the rich tan, darker at the roots and fading to the edges, became prized features. So there's our winning Yorkshire Terrier, number 4722. And now on the table, the import register winner, the Russian toy, sent forward by Jackie Stubbs. His choice was this 4743. The Russian toy, a relative newcomer, developed in the 20th century, to Chihuahua influence with some miniature pincher. Come in two varieties, the long coat we see here, with the fringing on the ears and on the tail and the smooth coated variety. Alert, very dainty and fine in bone. Our import register winner, the Russian toy. Another look round, reminding himself of what he found on hands on examination. Soon we'll see a short list. The Bichon is called forward. The long coat Chihuahua, 
the Chinese crested, the English toy terrier, the Italian greyhound, oh sorry, the Japanese chin, the larchen, the miniature pincher, and the Pekingese. And there we have our shortlisted dogs for the toy group at Darlington 2021. Just getting, I'm sure we're good to see them move again. So time to show your support, ladies and gentlemen. There's the winning Bichon. It's out and back, looking at the back and forth movement. And then round, round to join to the top end of the ring where the shortlist will line up. Our winning Bichon there. Number 3792. And there's our little Chihuahua, the long coat Chihuahua, number 3953. And round he goes, full of confidence. He doesn't know it's the smallest breed in the world. And here's the Chinese Crested, My Little Pony, striding out, that mane of hair, the plume tail, making a very elegant picture. The Chinese Crested. And here's the English Toy Terrier striding out with his extended trotting action. Those candle flame ears pricked. Smooth coated, elegant, and still capable of doing a job of work. Pretty keen on keeping down the vermin. Our English Toy Terrier there, number 4074. And he's the Japanese chin. Silky coated, lovely cushioned muzzle and dark eyes, full of importance in its strutting action. The Japanese chin there is number 4243. The little lion dog. Lion like coat pattern with the mane over the four quarters, silky textured, the shaved hind quarters, and the plume on the tail. And the miniature pincher, the sturdy, square, firm top line, a wedge shaped head. Hard to believe it's bred down from the Doberman Pinscher that we see in the working group. But there he goes, there she goes, the miniature Pinscher. And the dignified role of the Pekingese, low slung, carrying himself proudly with his rolling action. Short legs, but quite willing to have a go right round this main ring here. The, the boards have been called for. Who's coming back tomorrow to compete for best in show at Darlington 2021? Soon we'll know. It's a very energetic, 
Chinese question. In second place, the miniature pincher. In third place, the Pekingese. And for fourth spot, the long coat Chihuahua. So there we are. So it's the Chinese question. We'll come back tomorrow to compete for best in show. Rosette's going out, Gillian Marley from Darlington Committee, accompanying our judge. So a big round of applause for our judge, Tom Mother there. And uh, I'm sure a very happy owner taking round the Chinese Crested, our toy group winner, Darlington 2021. And our Pekingese <laughs> losing our lead there, so. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, while we've been watching the, the best of group being judged with all the best of breed winners, the toy best puppies have been pre-judged in an outside ring. So we're going to have the enjoyment of seeing the up and coming new stars in the toy group in a moment. I'm going to introduce you now to the man who's judging all of the puppy groups at Darlington this year. Well known to you all, Mr. Murray Armstrong. And there might be a couple to be seen, but most of them have been prejudged. Please welcome in our toy puppies, led in by the Bichon Frise, the Bolognese, the Cavalier King Charles, the Chihuahua, Long Coat and Smooth Coat, and the Cotton de Tuliar, the English Toy Terrier, the Griffon, the Havanese, the Italian Greyhound, the Japanese Chin, the King Charles Spaniel, the Maltese, the Miniature Pincher, the Papillon, the Pekingese, and the Pomeranian. And the Pug and the Yorkshire Terrier joining on. So there are the toy puppies. Call forward the Bichon, the Cavalier King Charles. The Smooth Coat Chihuahua comes forward and the Italian Greyhound. The Miniature Pincher, the Papillon, the Pekingese, the Pomeranian and the Pug. So thank you to all of the, pups, the puppies for representing their breeds. And round they go. Give them some support, ladies and gentlemen. For many of them, the first occasion when they've been in a big ring like this. Big crowds, applause. And strutting their stuff, full of confidence. A great advert for their breeds. They may be diminutive in size, but they're gigantic characters.
And the little peak coming on with great dignity at the end. Showing he's worthy of keeping up with them all. The boards are coming out. One of them will be staying on to compete for best puppy in show tomorrow. Where's the handshake going? It's the Papillon. The Papillon is best puppy in this group. In second place, the Miniature Pincher. For third spot, the Pomeranian. And in fourth, the Italian Greyhound. So, the little Papillon coming back tomorrow. Well done, all of you others, for representing your breeds. So, a Papillon topping the pups. So, stars of the future, no doubt, some of these. Now, lap of honor time. Show your appreciation for all these winning pups led by the Papillon. And from one generation to another, while we've been watching the puppies, the veterans of the group have been getting prejudged outside. And we, very shortly, we'll be ready to go on to see best veteran in the toy group. And the lady who's judging all of the best veterans at Darlington this year, please welcome her now, Mrs. Anne MacDonald. I think there's one to be seen, but the rest have been prejudged outside. The table's ready for the late examination. So please welcome in those toys now, led in by the Havanese, the Papillon, the Bichon Frise, the Cavalier King Charles, the Coton de Tulia and the Chihuahua, Smooth Coat, and the Chinese Crested, the English Toy Terrier and the Italian Greyhound keep on coming. Here comes the Japanese Chin, the Maltese, the Pomeranian and the Pub and the Yorkshire Terrier. That's a wonderful selection of toy veterans. Many of the toy breeds long lived, very healthy. And what a great selection we have here for Mrs. MacDonald. That's our little Havanese. This is a bitch, number 4151. The toy breeds provide great companionship to their owners. And now on the table, the Papillon, the choice of Wendy Waters. Of course, they're toys. It's still very important that they're well constructed under that often glamorous coat. 
They may be fine boned, but they have to be well constructed and sound. There's our winning Papillon, number 4452. That's a wonderful toy veteran group here. All of the rest have been examined outside and moved. This is the moment where the judge decides which of the ones she wants in the shortcut. And here we have the Chihuahua smooth coat is called forward, Chinese crested, the Italian greyhound, the Maltese comes forward and the Yorkshire Terrier with box. The tradition for showing the Yorkshire Terrier on the boxes, long lived, it's the only country in the world where we retain that tradition. It's thought that the tradition was started because there was, they wanted to stop their coats from being broken or trodden upon. In the early days, the Yorkshire Terriers were shown on silk sheets as well. The boards are coming out. Mrs. McDonald's seen them all move outside. She's going to decide who's coming back tomorrow to compete for best veteran in show. Who's coming back? The Yorkshire Terrier. The Yorkshire Terrier wins the veteran group. In second spot, the Maltese. For third place, the Italian Greyhound. And for fourth place, we have the Chinese Crested. So there you are. Thank you to all the other veterans. But it's the Yorkshire Terrier looking wonderful on, it, on its box here. Coming back tomorrow to compete for best veteran in show. So it's the Yorkshire Terrier coming back to compete for best in show. So lap of honor time, what a great show they put on ladies and gentlemen. Our toy veterans won here by the Yorkshire Terrier. Now there's the toy group judging finish. We're going to go move on in a moment to the gun dogs. We're just waiting for the last few best of breed winners to come. We're ready to go. 
Now, I'm going to introduce you to a judge who is a real gun dog all-rounder. I say that because he's made up champions in several gun dog breeds, Welsh Springer Spaniels, Pointers, English Setter, Irish Setters, Cocker Spaniels. And in all, he's owned 49 UK champions, which I consider a great achievement. Please welcome our gun dog judge, Mr. John Thirlwell. And in come the gun dog best of breed winners, led in by the Bracco Italiano, the Brittany, the English Setter, the German Longhead Pointer, the German Shorthead Pointer, and the Wirehead Pointer. The Gordon Setter comes next, and the Hungarian Vizsla, and the Wirehead Vizsla the Irish red and white setter and the Irish setter, the Italian Spinoni, the Legotto Romagnolo, the large Munsterlander, the pointer comes next, the, che the curly coated retriever and the flat coated retriever, the golden retriever and the Nova Scotia duck toller. First of the Spaniels, the American cocker, the Cocker, the English Springer, the Field Spaniel, the Irish Water Spaniel, the Sussex Spaniel, the Welsh Springer Spaniel, the Spanish Water Dog, in comes the Weimarana, and the Cortal Griffon, the Chesapeake Bay Retriever, Just taking in the outlines, indicators of breed type, if the dog's the right proportions, the right shape, that's a good starter. Then you can look at the details of breed type. The very good entry today of Bracco Italianos for Tom Mother. He chose this dog, number 2360, as best of breed. This is an all-purpose gun dog breed, originating in Italy, hugely popular, going back to the 17th century and the paintings of the breed then, working. They can both hunt game, retrieve them. They're all-purpose HPR hunt, point and retrieve dogs. This elastic gait, this lean head, thick, pliant skin to give it protection, and this athletic gait held on the move. There's the winning Bracco Italiano, number 2360. Our judge now looking at the Brittany 26 of them here today, and the winner was the bitch, number 2401. Another all-purpose gun dog, hugely popular in France. Their club shows, they're getting four or 500 dogs. Traditional working gun dog of France. Developed in northern France in Brittany, was originally called the Brittany Spaniel, but it wasn't just a flushing dog, it could retrieve and pick up. Interesting is that it has some traits which are not common in the gun dog, like only moderate angulation, fairly light bone, cobby body, and this brisk gait which comes from moderate angles.
There is the winning Brittany, 2401. The English setters today, 56 of them here for Mrs. Armstrong Rogers. The winner was this dog, number 2453. This one, a tricolour, which is a blue Belton with the extra tan on the head, some flecking on the legs. One of the most glamorous of the gun dog breeds. But the setters were developed to work at a great distance from the gun. They're free ranging, long distance gun dogs. They get the name setter because when they centered game, they went into a freeze or set, hence the word setter. So by pointing the game, they indicated to the gunman where the game was hiding. There is the winning English setter, number 2453. Now the first of the pointing family, the German long-haired pointer. Mr. Orzel judged three of them today and chose this bitch number 2480 as best to breed. This is perhaps the most rare of the German gun dog breeds. It's thought that the setter and the pointer were mixed to get this medium-sized setter. See them coming in this solid brown color, also a roan color called trout and shades of brown, liver and white. There is our German long-haired pointer, number 2480. The German shorthead pointers today, judged by Mrs. Millard, 76 of them are very good entry. She's a specialist judge and she chose this dog, number 2525, as best to breed. Here is a dog which is absolutely built for work, fit for function, a dog of moderation. Everything in moderation. Standard conformation with good angulation in front, but balanced by good rear angulation. A weatherproof coat, it's a hard to the touch and water repellent. The muzzle is long enough to pick up game. Large nostrils to scent, to pick up the scent. There is the German short head pointer, number 2525. Now the German wirehead pointers today were judged by Miss English and she's chosen this number 2566 as best of breed. Although they share some of the same ancestry as the German shorthead pointer, it's thought that the, there was an input of French Griffon breeds with the wire coat to get this wire-coated variety. They should be slightly heavier in build than the short-coated variety. And the wire coat gives them some furnishings on the foreface. There is our winning German wirehead pointer, number 2566. Now the Gordon Setter. 66 of them, another nice entry. Mrs. Lowe was the judge. 
The dog who is winning is number 2603. This is the heaviest of the set of breeds. Takes its name from the Duke of Gordon, on whose estate the breed was developed. It's perhaps the most substantial in bone and body. It's flat bladed bone it has, and it comes only now in this rich black and tan marking. In the early days of the 18th century, the, the Gordon setter was, had more varieties of color, including red and white, and red, but then there was selective breeding for the black and tan, and now it's known only in this color. There is our winning Gordon setter, number 2603. Hungarian Vizslers were judged by Mrs. Jill Peak today. Nice entry of 45. The winner was the dog number 2699. It's a, a breed with which our judge is very familiar, having handled one to best in show at Crufts. It's a breed which was brought from the eastern steppes of Russia into Hungary by the Magyar tribesmen. They're a breed of moderation. Come only in this rich russet chestnut color. The skin finds the coat slightly greasy to the touch. There should be a sort of gaunt quality to the head. There should be not a fleshy breed in the head, a sort of nobility in their gauntness. There is the winning Hungarian Vizsla, number 2699. Now the Hungarian wirehead Vizsla. This is Byrne, Jean Byrne, judged 37 of them today and chose this bitch, number 2740. Again, has some of the same ancestry as the Hungarian Vizsla we've just seen, but with an input of wire breeding, some wire, German wirehead pointer blood put into the breed to get this crisp, top coat and a little furnishing. The Vizslas are all-purpose breeds. They can hunt, scent and retrieve. The winning Hungarian wirehead Vizsla there, number two four. 2740. The Irish red and white setters were also judged by Mrs. Byrne. 28 of them here. She chose this dog, number 2764. The Irish red and white setter was the, perhaps the original of the Irish setters, but was overtaken with the popularizing of the solid red color, which you'll see in a moment. The Irish red and white is more heavily built, stronger boned, more substantial than the Irish setter, and of course, characterized by this coat, which are chestnut patches on a clear white background. In the late 19th century and early 20th century, the breed was almost extinct because of the popularity of the red setter. The numbers were really down, only a handful of breeders keeping them going. Fortunately, a bigger population now, but still a vulnerable native breed. Now, the Irish Red Setter, 73 of them today from Mrs. Grattan, a breed specialist. She chose this bitch, number 2795. 
as best to breed. A real thoroughbred, the Irish setter, with his lovely quality, racy outline, flowing from head to tail, lovely chiseling over the eyebrows and under the eyes, and of course this handsome coat, this rich, gleaming chestnut coat. Our group judge's first champion was an Irish setter. One of the characteristics of all of the setter breeds are the lashing tail action, you know, it's their character and willingness to work. Our winning Irish setter there, number 2795. Judge now looking at the Italian Spinoni. 23 of them here today for Mrs. Bovio. And she chose this dog, number 2877, as best of breed. It's a breed with lo a lot of unique features. This top line in particular, we'll see a dip behind the withers, then a rise to the croup and then a fall away. So it's got a, an, a bit of an undulating top line, which is a breed feature, but it shouldn't be a slackness in the back. It's a marked dip behind the withers. This pounding trot comes from a heavy bone. He's got thick, elastic skin and a wiry top coat. A fairly lean head, brick-shaped, large eyes and a human expression goes back into the middle ages as a hunting dog in italy and another italian hunting dog looked at now the the legato romagnolo now he started his life as a duck retriever in the Northern Lakes area of Italy. Then when the lakes dried up, he, the trainers used his scenting powers and taught him how to hunt truffles. And now he's used largely as a truffle hunter, scenting truffles underground. And uh, perhaps it's quite a lucrative gun dog then, but not working with the gun now characterized by this tight, curled coat of good texture, good length of leg, a strong skull and foreface. There is the Legotto Romagnolo, number 2896. Judge now looking at the large Munsterlander from an entry of 28. Mr. Harper judge chose this bitch, number 2922, as best of breed. A German all round breed coming from the Munster area. Thought the makeup consists of some of the other pointing breeds and perhaps some spaniel influx and comes only in this we see here a blue roan color but also black clear black and white all-purpose gun dog so it has length of muzzle great scenting powers from wide open nostrils should be athletic In Germany, we'll also see the Klein Munsterlander, the smaller variety, which is seen in liver and white. Okay. 
Miss Nichols judged the pointers today, 53 of them here. Her choice was this dog number 2977. A real thoroughbred amongst pointers. A series of graceful curves, says the breed standard. It should flow from head to tail. An aristocratic look in its expression from this slightly concave muzzle which lifts the nostrils high to pick up the scent. They're called pointers because when they pick up the scent, they freeze rather like the setters and go into a point to indicate where the game are. And then the gunmen send in the spaniels to flush them out. There's the pointer. The Chesapeake Bay Retrievers were judged today by this is Janet Morris, a breed specialist. An entry of 18 for her, and she chose this bitch, number 3006, as best of breed. As its name tells us, it comes from the northeast of America, Chesapeake Bay, where it was used as a duck retriever, and it's built to survive the extremes of the climate up there, especially in the winter months and the shooting season. You see this thick, oily coat to give it protection, big barrel ribs to give it flotation and heart and lung room for swimming for long periods. They used to be taken out into the lakes in boats, and when the game had been shot, they jumped in from the boats and retrieved the ducks. The curly-coated retrievers were judged by Jeff Horswell today, an entry of 27, and he chose this dog, number 3029, as best of breed. This is another breed where our judges has champions, or at least one champion. It's the tallest of the retriever breeds, characterized by this astrakhan curl coat, giving it protection, solidly built, the head cleanly molded, a long foreface to allow it to retrieve large game birds. Also come in liver. thought that the curly coat comes from an in input of either poodles or the old English water spaniel, which went extinct in the 18th century. There is our curly coated retriever. The flat coated retrievers were judged by specialist Mrs. Walker. From an entry of 62, she chose this dog, number 3051. This is the raciest of the retriever family. A bit more streamlined than the others. Thought that there may have been some spaniel or set of blood to give them this raciness. You should have cleanly molded head. And of course the flat coat noted for its happy temperament, always wagging its tail. Should be free from heaviness all through. There is the curly coated retriever, number 3029. Golden Retrievers had two judges today. The 
There were 141 here. And best of breed was this bitch, number 3169. Largest entry in the gun dogs today. It's a Scottish breed developed on Goosecan Estate, where the breed clubs still hold their championship shows every few years. Of course, hugely popular as a family companion for its wonderful sweet temperament, its devotion to its owners, but they should still be capable of doing a job of work with good balance, sound movement, and this good muzzle for retrieving. And now an interesting retriever, the, the Nova Scotia Ductola from Canada and North America. Mrs. Birchill judged a very nice entry of 60 of them today. Her winner was this dog, number 3365. This is a breed which was developed to lure ducks within gun range. And they did this by playing about on the shores of the lake, retrieving small sticks which the hunters through for them, and the, the activity of the dogs brought the ducks within gunshot range. Characterized by this chestnut coat with white markings on the chest, on the feet, perhaps a tip on the tail, and a, a little blaze on the head. There's a Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever, 3365. Now the first of the Spaniel family, now the American Cocker. This is Nelson, judged 20 of them today and chose this dog, number 3414, as best of breed. The American Cocker, relatively modern breed, separate, the ancestors of this breed were sent for, to America in the 19th century a dog called Obo II, who was also influential in the Cocker Spaniel himself. The breeders in America went along different lines and developed a Spaniel which was more heavily coated, more domed in the head, with a sloping top line. Hence, the American Cocker was recognized in 1945 as a separate breed. They were trained to work on quail, which are small birds, for a smaller breed, you see, in a smaller muzzle. But we've had some full champions in England. So underneath all that glamorous coat, there should be a dog capable of doing a day's work. There's our winning American Cocker, number 3414. Judge now going over the Cocker Spaniel. Bill Gray judged 74 of them and gave best of breed to this Blue Roan dog, number 3439. Still one of the most popular breeds in the country. In the early 20th century, one, one of the most popular breeds, and in fact, there have been Six of them in the 1940s won best in show at Crufts. They're called Cocker Spaniel because they used to work on woodcock. S small quail-like birds. The Merry Cocker is the epithet given to the breed because of this ever-wagging tail. They should be compact and cobby, good substance in a compact frame.
A judge now looking at the English Springer Spaniel, judged by Mr. McMaster. 49 entries for him, and he chose this dog, number 3532, as best of breed. This is the highest on the leg of the Land Spaniels. It's thought that the Duke of Norfolk, on his country estate, had a keen interest in developing this breed. They should be rectangular in build, and its movement should be a clean forward thrust of the front legs and good drive from the rear. Here we have a black and white. We'll see them also in liver and white and tricolour. The English Springer Spaniel there, number 3532. Judge now looking at the field spaniel, Mr. Orzo, judge 24 of them, is best of breed is this dog number 3583. One of the ancient land spaniels developed in the Midlands with the influence of other spaniel breeds. A dignified stride and carriage characterizes the breed and this wonderful length in its foreface with chiseling under the eyes. Here we have a liver, we'll also see them in black, liver and tan, black and tan, and in roans. Almost extinct at the start of the 20th century and after the world wars and they needed an influx of Springer Spaniel blood to keep the breed going. <laughs> Our judge now going over the Irish Water Spaniel. Ten of them here today. Our best of breed winner is the Bitch, number 3597. Although it carries the name Spaniel. Uh, when it comes to working tests, the Irish Water Spaniel works with the Retriever breeds because of its size. A native of Ireland, and it's thought that the Poodle plays some part in giving it this wonderful textured coat, the curly coat, and the long head with some refinement, but also the strength to retrieve ducks and other game. The Irish Water Spaniel there, number 3597. Now the smallest but very substantial Spaniel, the Sussex Spaniel. 23 of them today for Mrs. Harper. She chose this dog, number 3625 as best to breed. In the 19th century, developed to work in the heavy clays and un undergrowth of Sussex. Takes its wonderful color, this golden, golden liver with lighter tips to the coat. A wonderful texture like seal skin, heavily boned, low to ground. It's got the substance to bustle through heavy cover and the strength to flush out game. Now the Welsh Springer Spaniel, judged by Jeff Horswell, 42 of them here. He chose this dog, number 3650, as best of breed.
the Welsh Springer Spaniel comes only in this rich chestnut and white. And there's mention in the Middle Ages of the red and white hunting dog of Wales. For some time it was called the Welsh Cocker. But of course, it's uh, bigger than that. Has a very special top line, a slight rise over the loin. The Springer Spaniels were called Springer Spaniels be because before guns were invented, the hunters used nets to drive birds into the nets. And it was the Springers who were sent in to spring forward to drive out the game into nets. Hence the term Springer Spaniel. And he's another versatile gun dog. Now the Spanish water dog. Espen Eng, our visitor from Norway, judged 16 of them and chose this dog as his best of breed winner. The number is 3690 and it's a dog. This thick curly coat is dense, waterproof. The breed should be rustic, not they can have a complete trim every six months, but they shouldn't be sculptured. They have to remain rustic in their appearance. And apart from being used as a gun dog in its native country, it's also used as a water dog and as a herding dog. And now the Weimarana, the grey ghost dog of Germany. Breed specialist Mrs. Palmer judged 47 of them today and chose this bitch, number 3704. This is a gaunt, noble breed coming in this silver grey colour. Should have strength with a degree of elegance in this gauntness of the head, dry lips, there's nothing pendulous or loose about the breed, sharp outline, pliant skin, and this grey colour and lighter coloured eyes. The Weimarana. The Cortal Griffin comes from the import register. Another versatile working gun dog. Developed by Dutchman Edward Cortals, who used a variety of pointers and setters and wirehead griffons to develop the breed. Solidly built with its weatherproof coat. Carrying these furnishings on the on the head and on the legs. The Cortal Griffon, our import register winner there. the hands on examination of all the breeds, a judge reminding himself of what he found on hands on examination. We can all have our favorites from the ringside, but the judge has had his hands on, feel their anatomy, see how they're built, see how they move at close quarters. A long look round before he decides the shortlist from this big group.
The English setter comes forward. The Irish red and white setter. The pointer comes in. The curly coated retriever. And out comes the American Cocker Spaniel and the Cocker Spaniel. The Sussex Spaniel and the Spanish Water Dog. And there we have our shortlist for the Gun Dog Group. So. variety of the Gundog breeds. There's the English setter going around, showing off its top line and profile action, economic movement needed in the setter breeds. There's the Irish red and white setter. And here comes the black and white pointer. representing the Retriever family. It's the curly-coated Retriever. And the style and drive of the American Cocker. And the wagging tail of the Merry Cocker, the Blue Roan Cocker Spaniel. And the low set substance of the Sussex Spaniel. This rich golden tips to its coat. And there we have the Spanish water dog. The boards are coming out. Who will be the Gundog Group winner for Darlington 2021 and come back tomorrow to compete for best in show? Mr. Thurlwell might already know. He's going to share it with us now. The curly coated retriever wins the group. In second place, the pointer for third place. Third place is the Cocker Spaniel, and in fourth spot, the Sussex Spaniel. Well done to the others making the shortlist, but it's the Curly Coated Retriever. And I believe it's many years since the Curly Coated Retriever has won a Gundog group in the United Kingdom, so congratulations there. So, one very happy retriever and one very happy retriever owner there. Pointer in second, the Cocker Spaniel and the Sussex. So, a big hand for John Thurwell, our Gundog Group judge. And round they go, please. Led by the curly coated retriever. We'll soon be ready. We're not quite ready. They're still completing the pre-judging of the big 
puppy group, so just a few minutes break, ladies and gentlemen. It's good to see a good crowd here, enjoying the sunshine, enjoying North Yorkshire and this lovely showground, and looking at some top quality dogs. We'll soon be with you. Okay, we're waiting for one puppy, but we're going to proceed with the puppy group. Please welcome our judge back, Mr. Murray Armstrong. <laughs> and wel welcome in the Gundog Pops now, led in by the Bracco, the Brittany, an energetic Brittany, the English setter, German short-head pointer, German long-head pointer, German wire-head pointer, and the Gordon setter behind, the Hungarian Vizsla, wire-head Vizsla, Irish red and white setter, and the Irish setter, the Italian Spinoni, Legotto, Romagnolo, the large Munsterlander, the curly-coated retriever, the flat coat and the golden retriever ah, and the Labrador retriever puppy and the Nova Scotia duck tolling retriever and the American cocker and the English springer. Then the Irish water spaniel and the Sussex spaniel, the Spanish water dog, the Weimarana, the Cortal Griffin from the import register. Thank you very much, all of you. <laughs> now, all of these have been examined outside. The Welsh Springer puppy was hoping to get here. From a, it's arrived now. The Welsh Springer puppies come in to join on the line. So we have a full complement of gun puppies. And there they are, Welsh Springer puppies. So round of applause for making the puppy group here. Short, 
Oxted, the German shorthead pointer. The Irish setter and the Irish red and white setter. The curly coat and the flat coat come out. The Nova Scotia duck toller, the American cocker and the English springer. And the Welsh springer comes in as well. So well done to all of you other pups making the shortlist here. Just a change of handlers, just sorting us out. A walk down the line. Round they go. Give them some encouragement, ladies and gentlemen. These are shortlisted puppies here. Watching them go in profile, reveals their top line, their reach and drive. And who's winning the group? It's the the Irish red and white setter in second place, the German short-haired pointer. The third spot, the flat coat retriever, and in fourth, the Nova Scotia duck toller. So there we are. It's a setter to lead home the gun dogs here, the gun dog puppies. So. Rosette's going out now. And lap of honor time. Cheer them on, folks. There's our winning Gundog Puppies, the Irish Red and White Setter. And from one generation to the next, from the puppies to the older generation, I'm not talking about our judge, please welcome Mrs. Anne MacDonald. In come the veterans. We have one to see, I believe. And that's going to be the Cocker Spaniel will be seen first. But welcoming the veterans, ladies and gentlemen, the Cocker Spaniel, the German Shorthead Pointer, German Wirehead Pointer, the Vizsla, the Irish Setter, the Italian Spinoni, the Legotto Romagnola, the Large Munsterlander, the Pointer, the Labrador Retriever the English Springer Spaniel, the Irish Water Spaniel, and the Sussex and the Welsh Springer. So there they are.
only the cockets to see here. of course seven years old and older many of them considerably older and all the others having been seen Anne's walking up the line, reminding herself of what she saw when she moved them and examined them. Great advert for pedigree dogs to see all these veterans fit and healthy and enjoying life. in our shortlist. The German shorthead pointer and the German wirehead pointer and the Vizsla. The large Munsterlander comes forward. The Welsh Springer and the Cocker Spaniel. So there you are, our veterans shortlist. Well done to all of the others representing their breed so well. And they're sent round individually, watching them go up to the top of the ring. There's the German wirehead pointer. Riding out well, and there's the visitor following suit. Really enjoying the big ring to show up their paces. And there is the large Munsterlander. There's the Welsh Springer Spaniel. And finally, the Cocker. Cocker Spaniel. Right, the boards are coming out. Our last decisions of the day now, ladies and gentlemen. Made good time at Darlington this year. Who's coming back tomorrow? Who's best veteran in the gun dog group? It's the Spaniel. Gun dog group veteran. In second place, the German wirehead pointer. The third spot, the Hungarian Vizsla. And in fourth, it's the large Munsterlander. So well done, all of you, making the cut. It's the Cocker Spaniel, we'll come back tomorrow. So, there's our final decision of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a pleasure to see you here. I hope you feel like me, that it's good to be out again, mixing with our friends, looking at lovely dogs. We hope you enjoyed your Darlington experience. We wish you a safe journey home. We hope that some of you might come back tomorrow to see the climax of Darlington in the best in show judging. But if not, we hope to see you next year. Now, before you head off to your car, let's see this last lap of honor of the Gundog veterans led off by the Cocker Spaniel. A big thank you to our judge, and McDonald's, Ladies and gentlemen, great to see you. Safe journey home. See you next year. Good night.